Hello, my name's Toby Thompson. I'm here today with Paul Baines, Professor of Political Marketing, possibly the UK and maybe the world's only Professor of Political Marketing. Paul, what would you see in the face of the UK general election coming up this year in 2015? What would you see to be the main challenges facing the parties? I think the key challenge facing the parties is distinguishing themselves from each other. Uh, so I think in the, in the mind of the, uh, of the electorate, there's uh, to some degree a, a kind of merging of the parties. Um, with little distinguishing factor at this point. And partly that's their own fault for not putting out a, um, a manifesto, a clear manifestos early enough. But it's also partly because they've been in coalition for uh, for the previous, uh, previous election and it looks like we may end up in another coalition. But the trick, the key challenge, is to differentiate themselves from one another. Maybe it's not a fair question, but in your opinion, what do you think really works in terms of political marketing? Well, there's no, there's no magic bullet. There's no one-size-fits-all kind of approach, you know, two of this and one of that. That, that won't work. But the, there may be a process uh, that, that should be followed, and, and the process really is to undertake significant amounts of research amongst the electorate, both qualitative research to understand people's feelings, thoughts, motivations for, for voting, but also quantitative research to understand how um, the vote is, is changing, intention to vote, how people think about particular leaders and so on, en masse. And with that data, you start to understand what, how the uh, electorate segments, which groups of people are interested in which parties and which are potentially uh, prepared to switch. And it's the group that are prepared to switch that really matter. And the group that are prepared to switch probably number less than maybe half a million. Um, so these are uh, people in, uh, in marginal constituencies, those constituencies that voted for one side but, but not in great numbers so that they're close to, uh, to being won by another party. And if you look at marginal voters, that's those that have not yet made up their mind, in marginal constituencies, you're talking about a relatively small group of, say, something like a quarter of a million people in perhaps somewhere between 60 and 100 constituencies. So that's the battleground. But political marketing is different from traditional marketing and it's different on this dimension and that's that political marketing allows negative campaigning. It's not really so possible in, in other forms of marketing because if you uh, attack another brand there's a good chance you could end up in court. But in political marketing it's much less likely because the claims made about uh, as long as they're not libelous uh, are, are, are more about judgment and, uh, and ideas, really. So it's more difficult to claim uh, that, that, uh, that one was being attacked or one's brand was being damaged uh, and that sort of thing. And there's a point about, in a democracy, about the discussion of ideas more generally and who's fit for office. So it's perceived to be more legitimate to attack under certain circumstances. So what I'm saying is that in, in political marketing, it's not just about having a vision for Britain which none of them have at the moment, or at least have not articulated it clearly. But it's also about attacking someone else's lack of vision. And so the trick is to partly demonstrate your own vision for Britain, but partly to attack others' uh, vision for Britain, but to do so in a measured and, ob and, and fairly objective way. That's the, that's the key trick. If there's a magic bullet, that would be it. And in the mix of all that, how important, if at all, do you think is social media? Well, I'm of the view that social media is not as important in, in this uh, election as it will be in future elections. Uh, as the British people start to become increasingly, start to build social media into their lives more and more, I think it will become more important. But, you know, the, the Conservative Party is spending a considerable amount of money on social media at the moment, something we're told in the media of, of around 100,000 a month, uh, which is fairly substantial. But I think they're using it really to, to build their activist vote, to bring together their activists, people who are already voting Conservative, as a way of, of ensuring that they get out to vote, first of all, and secondly, that they potentially persuade other people to, to vote in marginal constituencies. So I think they're using it more to raise the troops uh, and, uh, than, than persuade other, others that are not necessarily voting for them. If you look at what influences people, and we've done this uh, at Ipsos Mori, some of the research that I've done with, uh, uh, with um, Sir Robert Worcester and his team. What we've seen is that the overwhelming influence in any election is usually um, the debates. 
So in both the last two elections, the key thing which influenced how people vote was apparently the debates. That's what they said, self-reported. So if it's the, but the interesting thing is, is more people expressed uh, the idea that they were influenced by the debates than actually watched the debates. So what's that mean? Well, what it actually means is they're influenced not necessarily by watching the debate itself, but by the reportage of the debates. But nevertheless, the point is the debates have a huge influence. And this is part of the reason why we're seeing this great discussion and negotiation about what the format of the debates is. And what they've finally settled on is this idea of being grilled by an audience rather than being grilled by each other. And that's because both leaders are, are concerned that, uh, that the debate will have a significant influence on what promises to be a very tight election. We're going to witness an interesting campaign coming up. Paul, thank you very much indeed for your time and thank you for watching.